Oh, look at that! Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, Adam Savage here in my cave with a show and tell. A very exciting one. Um, a while back, I shared with you all uh, an incredible facsimile that I had collected uh, of... Actually, I have a set of incredible facsimiles of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks. Not all of them. There are a lot of Leonardo's notebooks. Uh, the most famous one that you've probably heard of is the Codex Leicester, former the, formerly the Codex Hammer. Um, and it is owned by Bill Gates. Uh, and uh, this wonderful Italian artist, Stefano Tartaglioni, makes a incredible replica of the Codex Leicester. And I bought one years ago. And then uh, over time, I have acquired a few more of Stefano's pieces. I have the Codex on the Flight of Birds. And I have the Codex Forester 1 and 2. Okay. And this is Codex Forester 3. Yeah. Um, I could barely be more excited. And actually, I think I should probably set you up on an overhead so you can actually see this as I see it. Because I think this is one where we don't want to just do B-roll. I think this is one in which... Oh, it's really scary to cut open packaging like this. Oh, God. I'm so... I, I can't even tell you. I love these facsimiles. And there is a... There, it looks to me like there's a healthy market in super high-end uh, manuscript facsimiles. And high-end is the term of, <laughs> is the term, because these things are not cheap. Um, yeah. Uh, they cost real money, but that's also because they are masterpieces. I mean, uh, I, you know, while the cost is not insubstantial, uh, the work itself is insanely substantial. And in my opinion, worth every freaking penny. Uh, let me get you that shot. All right. Oh, this is... Wait, is that going to be able to... Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we have... Uh, there seems to be more to this than I expected. Oh, my goodness. Oh, right. I, mm -hmm. Okay, I just didn't know that... Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is the COA. Um, I believe this here is the Codex Forester 3. <laughs> yeah, it's a small one. Foresters 1 and 2 and 3 are small notebooks. Hey, uh, oh, I think we can actually zoom in here. There we go. Oh, 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 ho, 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 ho. you're kidding me. I had no idea it was this small. That is freaking hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the original Codex Forester, the uh, one, two, and three. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. The original Forester 1, 2, and 3 are all, uh, they all live at the Victoria and Albert Museum. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, these little studies. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 wow, oh my God, the different colors of inks. I don't even know. I mean, I kind of know how they do this, but I still really am just gobsmacked by how they do this. Wow. Does it go like this? Is that the way it should be? I think maybe. 
Yeah, I can't hear you. It's hard to say that. Oh my goodness. So sorry. Yes, I think I have it here correct now. I think it's this way. I, I got it wrong. I was opening it the upside down way. Oh, look at this. Pulley advantages. Oh, oh more. More. More pulley advantages. I mean, the thing that's, it just, it really, every paper tear is identical to the original. That's the part about this that really, that really slays me. Oh, that is a church plan right there. Yeah, that's a cathedral, that's a cathedral layout. A crane for lifting. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, I just can't get enough of these drawings. Yeah, there's something just about handling this and amazing. Now I've got all three. Forester one, two, and three. But what is in here? What is in here? Um, I think I know what it is. And it was something that we had talked about. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh no way. Oh my gosh. Stephanie. Oh wow. Anatomical. These are replicas of the anatomical studies. They are so surpassingly beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. Spine. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't even want to know how he was able to draw that. I mean, I make it an educated guess. These are, this is insane. Yes, we had talked about a commission of the anatomical drawings. I just didn't know how huge they were and how magnificent. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, I want to frame every single one of these. Oh. Lungs, valves. It's funny, it like draws the body like a like a plumbing system too. Um wow. This is before Vesalius's anatomy, man. This was hard work to get access to information like this. Hard and gross work, I believe. Wow. Oh, what magnificence. Ah, and these are the masters. I see. I got you. These are the master prints. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So these are the master prints of these. Oh, with exactly what is on each one. Oh, oh, oh. what an incredible guide. All right. I'm going to, it makes me scared to have a blade so close. So I'm going to close that and put that over here. I mean, this is where Stefano's artistry really shows. He calls this paper sculpting. Um, it's so beautiful. All this foxing and wear and tear on the edges of the pages from centuries of 
Enthusiasm. There's 20 of these, and I will carefully place them back into the folder. Oh, hey, 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 hi, hi, everybody. All right, oh, yes. What a freaking masterpiece. Amazing. I love, I'm looking for an experience. I'm always looking for an experience with this entire building full of stuff. Each object in here that is like an object that compels me is an object that compels me because it's not just a, it's not just, how do you say this? It doesn't just have fidelity from a visual standpoint. It also has it from a tactile standpoint, from a construction standpoint. They even smell like old books. <laughs> it's a particular theatrical magic in these, in, in this, like 300 years ago, someone had this in their pocket. That's entirely plausible, right? That's amazing. Um, I feel very lucky to have met the artist. I mean, we haven't met in person, but to have come across such an incredible sculptor as Stefano is and the work that he does. And we had talked about uh, the anatomical drawings as a commission. I just didn't know they were coming in this shipment. <laughs> it is such a bonus. I am so excited. Um, Yeah, that's just a quickie. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, thank you guys for joining me for this show and tell. And um, like I said, the Forester Three resides in the V&A, the Victoria and Albert Museum in Kensington in London. And it is, if you haven't been there, it is one of the world's great museums. If you've ever even been remotely interested in steampunk, their display of wheel lock pistols will show you that there's so much untrammeled ground within within steampunk. Uh, some of the at automata they have. I mean, they hosted uh, Deborah de Dillman Landis's incredible costume exhibition. They put it on. That was she did that in concert with them. Uh, it is, like I said, one of the world's great museums. And if you have a chance to go, you should. I go every single time I'm in London, even if I actually I, the last time I was there, which is like 2018, 2017. It's been a while. Uh, the last time I had a day to myself, I used that day to go to the VNA. Thank you guys for joining me for uh, just me enthusing and getting excited about some prop replicas. And I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.